Hi guys, so I'm going to show you um, just some really quick techniques to um, do the embossing and get the embossing started. Um, so I'm going to be working with the piece of aluminums that I sent you and um, one of the stencils. I've cut it out. Um, you don't have to cut these out, but I did just so that it's a little bit easier to place on the aluminum. Um, if you're kind of worried about it shifting around, you could even tape this down a little bit. Just put a little piece of you know, masking tape, just a tiny piece just to keep it in place. Um, but you can also just press down on it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to have um, your materials in front of you, which is um, you can use a, um, some rolled up newspaper. Uh, what works really well too is like a paper towel or yeah, a paper towel that's folded into a couple of pieces. Um, I really kind of like, I kind of stumbled onto this by accident. I just use this foamy uh, laptop holder. It's got a little bit of a piece of foam inside. Um, what you're looking for is something that's going to um, give a little bit underneath so um, it doesn't so you're not just writing uh, sketching on a flat surface but you're sketching on something that's going to help you create some of that embossing technique um, so i'm just going to go ahead and use this little piece of foam and place my image right on there and i'm just using a regular ballpoint pen and your first step is to kind of trace it out. Now, I just want to keep, I want you to keep in mind that you don't have to use these stencils. You can actually um, sketch right on here. If you wanted to do a smiley face, um, if you wanted to do a butterfly, or you wanted to make a guitar, um, you could just sketch right onto your aluminum. I'm using a stencil because that's what I've sent you and just to kind of stay within the lines, um, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna position this on here to make sure that it fits. I had it like this and then the flames were kind of off the charge there, so I'm repositioning it. There we go. And then the first step is just to draw your lines. So I don't want you to think about this as like, if you feel, if you're one of those people that feels a little bit overwhelmed with drawing, you think, oh, I could never draw that, that's really nice, or I can, I remember I drew a train for my father-in-law and I was like, I could never draw a train, I don't, I, yeah, I can see a train in my head, but I don't know how to translate it onto paper. Um, it's okay to use, to use stencils and also to think about these just as lines. So you can see that I've made my first line, and all it does is it shows up on the aluminum as a line. So I'm going to go back in and draw some of the other lines. You don't have to draw everything in. If I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna use the heart. I'm not gonna use the flames. You can leave those out. But I'm gonna just trace all the lines. Kids, if you're doing this at home, you can have your parents help you um, by taping your stencil down so that you don't lose your spot. And then I'm just gonna go around the edges. And these are just really simple kind of little I like to think about them as like spider web edges, you know. And I'm not going to draw each individual line here, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, but I have a couple little flowers in here, and that's just a curl with a couple of circles on the outside, and then a couple of leaves. Okay, so when you look at them, you're like, oh no, I don't know how to do that. You can actually just Think about them as a curl, a couple little circles on the outside, and then a leaf, okay? All right, so I think I have enough on here to um, start creating my, doing my embossing. So I'm gonna show you just a couple of techniques. If you just left it like this, why that would just be a really pretty bookmark. You could give it to, you know, a friend or put it on your wall or whatever. Um, but to get some more textures in here, like some of the textures that we've created here, I'm going to show you some techniques. So the first technique is to do to press your lines a little bit a little bit farther in. I'm just kind of pushing on it. Don't push too hard, especially if you have a really soft underneath because um I always do make the mistake of like pressing too hard and then it breaks right through the aluminum. What you're actually trying to do is work with the aluminum. You and the aluminum are friends. And you're pushing a little and the aluminum is pushing back a little bit. Okay, so I've just retraced my initial lines. And what that's done is it's pressed 
that line. Let's press that line, it gives it a little bit more texture. And now you can actually see it on the back a little bit better. Okay, so my next step is I'm gonna show you um, just a couple of techniques. One of them, a friend of mine just called it hugging the lines, which I think is just a really fun way to think about this, is that if you turn it over and we think about hugging, you, you're basically drawing a line on the inside of that line and then you're drawing a line on the outside of that line. So you've basically now drawn this heart three times, right? You've pressed it one way and then you're pressing it out the other way. So I'm gonna turn this around because I want you to see the effect that that gives it. You can now see that I've created more of an embossing effect and you can see that it's popped out a little bit more on this side. Okay, so that's one technique that you can use. You don't have to use the hugging technique on every single line, but it's one way to create some of the different textures that you might want to create on your on your image. Um, you know, when I drew this, I told you that I was gonna leave off these lines right here. And the reason is uh, because they're pretty easy to draw. So I have a point right here and I can just connect from here to there every, um, you know, at every point. So I'm just gonna draw in those lines right now. And that's gonna help me, um, again, actually, it's it's helping to produce a little bit of, of some of that embossing effect. And if you want to, um, if you want to keep creating an embossing effect, then um, what you can do is you can use your, your pen to maybe, push that aluminum out on the other side. Do you see how I'm using my pen? It's not really drawing anything, but it's putting just the amount of pressure that I want to create that little bit of a lift on this side. So all I did is I turned, turned it over to the, now what I'm calling the back, and I'm just pressing in almost as if I'm telling the aluminum to push out that way. Another technique that you can use if you um, if you would like to try a little bit something else is to use the, um, the bottom of a paintbrush, a makeup brush, a toothpick, another, this is a fancy tool, I think is for painting nails or something, I don't know. Um, you can also use those to give you a little bit more of a finer, um, finer details. I'll go back to using my pen just so that if all you have in front of you is a pen, you can keep working with that pen. So there's a little bit more texture there now. Do you see how that's popped out? Okay, I'm going to show you um, a couple of other techniques. I have a rose here and um, the rose is barely visible right now. So I'm gonna come back onto the back of it. And again, I'm just gonna, it's almost like if I'm coloring it in. And I'm using the lines that I've already drawn. So you can see that I really worked, I really worked that the bottom of that really well because what I want is I want that flower to pop right out. I want it to be really visible. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more technique. Uh, and that is to kind of create a little bit more texture here. Something that I see a lot on this kind of design is to have little dots around the edges. So I'm going to turn it to the back and I'm just gonna draw in those dots. And these ones, the way that they come out really nicely is if you kind of push them out by using your pen in a circular motion as if you're drawing it in well you are drawing it in but you're really pushing it in right so now i want you to see how that's looked on this side it's created this really nice little kind of punch effect okay and i'm going to show you one final technique and that is um how to create kind of this um this beautiful real 3d look and how to get that. So this one is a little bit trickier. Um, it's it's not that hard, but it, it can be a little tricky. Um, again, you want to use like a soft rounded edge. You can use something like this uh, to get a really pronounced um, 
um, 3D effect or you can use something like this to get a, a little bit more softer. I'm going to go with the softer one because I want it to really um, push out a little bit. I've tried a few different um, pieces here and now it looks kind of like a very bumpy heart, which is also a kind of a neat way to think about your hearts that they can look however you want them to look. Um, but I've used this kind of smaller end to do a little bit more texture right there. And then I used this bigger end to give it a really smooth look. Um, if you want to get this very, very smooth, very pronounced 3D look, then you probably want to go with something that's a little bit more um, wider and rounder. So I know that this is the front. I don't want to neglect these details. Um, what you want to do is you really want to work these details out and then do the heart part close to the end um, because once you get to this stage, it's really hard to come in and do these fine details without um, putting too much pressure on your heart and re-flattening that out. So um, so we're going to pretend that I've got all my details in, that I've or most of my details in, that I have, all, I'm almost at the very last part of it. So I'm going to flip it to what is the back. And um, I'm just going to work in kind of small circles. And I'm going to move around and feel out how much pressure to put in. And notice that I'm working kind of in small circles, but I'm also moving around kind of like a Roomba, right? I'm kind of, you don't want to push, you don't want to stay in one place too long. You kind of want to go around. So I've already got a little bit of a 3D effect right, right there. Or, uh, you, and you can stay there, or you can just keep working. And I'm not going to show you the whole process because it takes a little bit of time. you got to have some patience with yourself, with the aluminum. Um, but the more that you press and work into that area, the more uh, pronounced your 3D look will get. Um, so this one, um, I actually cut it out because I wanted this one to be cut out. And then I continued to work on these edges. Um, and I've already painted it, so I don't want to do too much work on it. But you can see that it's almost the last step that you take because you want to make sure some of these, you know, these details are nice and neat. You can see that some of my details probably could have used a little bit more, more work. Um, I use nail polish on this to color it. So that's one of the ways that you can finish. I use like a pink nail polish and then I think I used yellow acrylics on there. Um, you can try out different uh, materials for adding color. This one has Sharpies. Um, I really love this one. Actually, um, Grandpa Hilario made this uh, when we did a workshop a few years back in Yakima. Um, this one has no color on it at all. This one was made by my friend Eduardo um, at a Women Who Rock conference a few years back. And it's got no, the only color that it has on it is from the ink pen that he used. Um, and then this one kind of has a bunch of different techniques because I wanted to kind of try them out for you guys. Um, I drew in, I think I used a regular one that I sent you, but I've added all of these extra types of textures here by just kind of using my pen and drawing and kind of thinking about what those, what that might look like. Um, and then I... Um, I don't know if you can see these very well, but there's these cute little birds here. Um, so, you know, now I can just go back in and add some of my, some of my Sharpie. I actually prefer Sharpies on this. You can use acrylics. Some people are really, really successful with acrylics on here. You kind of have to have the right kind of acrylics. There's my little bird. You kind of see him there. It's a little bit hard to see there's his beak. Um... These are acrylics here, which don't look very great. They they're, have a very matted look. Um, but like Amara said earlier, you could always use a, a top coat. Yeah. So if you use nail polish, acrylics, uh, or whatever, or even Sharpies, you can use a top coat to kind of shine this up a little bit. Um, the last thing that I'll, that I'll tell you is about the back. So this is the back of this image. Um, you can fill in this heart with some hot glue to keep it um, in a 3D state. Um, you can poke a couple holes in here if you wanted to. Um, this is, I'm gonna 
just poke a hole in here so you see how you do that. Um, I just use a really fine tip. You can use a toothpick or something else that'll pierce through it. It just makes a little tiny hole there. I would put a second one on this side and then put a string through there to hang it up. Or you can use hot glue and a little piece of wire in the back to hang it up on your wall if you wanted to. This one is cut out. Um, this one is cut out as well. They're really nice when you cut them out. Um, but you can also consider um, not cutting them out and just leaving it as a, a frame that you either give away or hang up. Um, you can even decorate your, your little hangers like this one. These were some ornaments that we made for a Christmas tree a few years back and I just used some extra beads that I had laying around. I actually found some beads uh, in one of my art drawers that I was like, oh, we could even use those. So anything that you have that you think would, you know, make that look nice, you could use to, um, to either make it as a gift or to hang it somewhere in your office or on your Christmas tree or whatever you'd like. Okay, so that's kind of it. Um, send me a message on Instagram or on Facebook if you have any questions or if you have any dudas, you're like doing it, you're like, ah, what do I do? Um, I sent you um, some extra pieces, so I gave sent you two of these so you can kind of start small and try out the techniques. And then um, a bigger one for when you're ready to kind of dive in. And I would love, love, love to see what you make. So if you um, make a piece and you want to share it with the world, tag me so that I can see it as well. All right. All right. Take care. Have a lovely day.